All right, welcome back. This is M Dog. We are at 141.98 down here at <coughs> Octuba over on the sort of edge. Basically, right at the start of H6, it looks like. And uh, this is just an ideal spot for a uh, bolo rod, the Bolognese. I've got a linear 500 here. Um, I also have the uh, Fishing S Eagle Bolognese SB15, the uh, 4.5 meter. Much easier to handle than the 7.5 meter one of the same model. But I thought I would talk about show kind of using a bolo rod. This is to me like the ideal spot where you would want to use bolo rod. There's a lot of times where uh, sometimes people use bolo rods or I, even sometimes I've tried to use bolo rods when like, let's say you're in this spot here and you're wanting to fish for whatever, right? And you're kind of right here on the shore and you're watching it in the current go left to right. Like, Technically, yes, you can use, obviously, you can use bolo rod in this situation, but it's ne it never feels like as natural to me. It doesn't feel like you're really, I guess it feels unnecessary. So, like, instead of doing that, you know, just use a match rod in that situation. It's going to work better. Or even still use a float rod, a telescopic rod, you know, in this situation. And to me, you just have a lot more control over the short cast and uh, you know, you're getting the fish in and out a lot quicker. And you know, you've probably spent a lot more time using telescopic rods, so it just gets easier in like how to use them. But, oh, I didn't mean to do that. But when you get out into like a longer, bigger area where you may be wanting, you may be wanting to track your uh, float farther away from you than just like right at your feet, something like this, then bolo rod starts to shine, in my opinion. So I'm going to just go ahead and throw it way out here. This is actually a pretty fun spot. Um, and all my searching for Shemayas uh, and, and looking where other people have caught Shemayas, this is one spot that I've kind of stumbled upon. And you can see like I'm zoomed in with the uh, binoculars. And we see the bolo float go under, and then we catch the fish. And this, to me, is just great. Like, this is where, again, a bolo Bolognese rod really shines. And it all of a sudden is fun. It's allowing you to float fish at distance, easily drift with the current. Uh, and, and, and it's like, this makes sense. This is why some of these like long Bolognese rods actually make sense and has a place in the game to me. So um, let's try to get a couple more bites here. I actually wanted to play around with hook size. Um, mostly what I've been catching here in this spot is uh, Sichel uh, in previous days at least. First fish was a Sichel and then it looks like we had a Rudd. Oh, I missed that bite. That actually doesn't happen that often to me. Let's get retrieval speed going. Since I've kind of gotten used to this, it's been going pretty well. All right, I think we have the same setup here. We just can't cast this one as far. But um, I wanted to show you. So sometimes if you cast it and it doesn't look like the line is naturally pulling out, you may have to manually close and then reopen your bail that will get it working sometimes just uh, the way it lands or whatever if it doesn't have enough momentum then um you know you may not get and you see how i'm just basically when the fish when the fish pulls the float under all i'm doing is sort of looking there's a sigil all i'm doing is sort of looking down to the side and just reeling okay i'm not um going crazy i'm not shift reeling i'm not hitting control right click. I'm not doing anything intense. I mean, we have a little uh, 3.4 line on here so that, you know, it would pop pretty easy. Um, open that bale, 
close it then open it and then let's watch the float I'm literally just kind of looking down to the left and just starting to slowly reel and that typically will hook the fish as long as it's a decent bite and for me at least that has been a really uh, consistent way to land fish on the bolo rod. I think it also works, works pretty well for match doing it that way, although you might have some other options with match. So I just sort of look to the side, start reeling, nothing frantic. And uh, the, fish, the fish typically will just hook, hook on successfully. And then you just reel it in like you would with, with any other type of setup. And that seems to work really well, so. Um, let's try adjusting the hook size to see if that changes. We're going to go smallest hook possible. When I started, oh, can we not use them on 24s? Okay, so we're not going to go smallest hook possible. We'll go 22. Uh, when I started fishing here, I was certainly not here looking for Sitchel. Uh, I really was trying to find the Shamaya. And so I've played with different depths. By the way, if you're wanting to fish in this spot, um, the depths are anywhere from 80 centimeters to 1.2 meters. I think around right around 90 centimeters to one meter is maybe the best. But so by default, I usually just have mine at one meter unless I'm intentionally trying to play with it to see if I can catch different fish. But unfortunately, although there might be Shamaya in this spot, I think the Sitchel have pretty much taken over. Uh, and if I don't catch a Sitchel, it's often a Rud. In fact, the shorter the cast you go, the more likely you're to get a Rud. If you kind of go right at your feet, you might just catch a Rud. All right, that's another Sitchel, I believe. And you can, you know, we can uh, sort of cast out this way a little bit. I'll switch back to the other one so we can get some more distance on casting. With the other bolo rod I was using, the longer one, I can get it out to the point in which, like when this when the biting's hot, basically the fish will get on there as soon as it hits the water. I'm getting a bite, uh, typically. So, we definitely were getting a nibble there. Oh yeah, we have the smaller hook on, don't we? Yeah, just make sure the float gets completely clear and it's not a fake bite. And once it really goes under, then we wanna Start reeling. Is that a sitchel as well? It looks like a small sitchel to me. Yeah. So now all we're doing is catching small sitchels by having that uh, that hook size. So that's not what we want. All right. So on this one, typically like aiming again a little more to the right. Go ahead and open that bale back up. Make sure it's going to do its thing. Yeah. You see that? That's what I'm talking about. We can cast to a spot here. Now, you don't typically consider Sitchel a farming fish, right? It's actually not a Sitchel. Is that a Caspian? Oh, it's an Eyed. Okay. I thought it was a Caspian Roach, which we have caught here a couple times as well. You don't consider Sitchel a, um, a farm typically. Look, we're already getting a bite. It's just like as soon as it hits the water which means this is a good spot for me to level up float fishing, which was part of what ended up keeping me here for a little while yesterday was I was occasionally getting points in float fishing. But to finish my thought, I actually was still making decent silver, even though it was primarily sitchel because I was getting some pretty big ones. And so that helped with their cost value and also just the volume i mean there's times at different points during the day where this spot will just be one fish after another with the uh, bolognese rod so
So this has gone from honestly the Bolognese rig or rod. It has kind of gone from something that I really despised. I mean, my early experiences with the bolo rod, I think because I was trying to make it work in spots that just really didn't make sense for it. Uh, and it just always felt awkward. And so I didn't really get the, uh, I don't know, the appeal of it. Where now that I'm sort of using it in a spot where clearly, like, this is perfect for bolo drifting away from you with the current i think i've just messed up two bites there let me try this again i need to slow down i think it's like i'm talking and fishing at the same time it might be that i'm pulling it too soon let's make sure we're getting a bite but anyway my enjoyment of using the bolo rod has gone up significantly But for me, at least, I think if you're fishing close to the sh to the shore or close to where you are, it just makes more sense. Yeah, I think I was going too fast before. It just makes more sense to me, and at least often it does, to, to go with more of a either just a telescopic rod or the match rods. Uh, I just feel like you have more precision and... Um, Yeah, so I don't, I don't know. That's just kind of been my experience with finding the right situations where using a bolo rod is actually pretty enjoyable. God, did I mess that one up too? I wonder why I'm uh, all of a sudden not hitting these fish. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if it's a different fish species. Like, is it harder to hook there we go Let's see if this is a sitchel that is not a sitchel so maybe we're getting different fish species like common roach will nibble so they might not be fully getting on there let's change up our casting area here okay now we're back into it That's a rud. Maybe this spot is just changing. Yesterday I would sit here and I would end up with, you know, 30 to 40 sitchel if I fished long enough in a day. With other things mixed in, but primarily it was sitchel. Now it's maybe a little more balanced between different types of fish. But kind of this area that I'm casting to, to me, it's like the sweet spot. If you want to just get bite after bite after bite, like if you're trying to level float fishing and you want to try using something other than just like, you know, telesticks right at your feet kind of thing. This is a pretty nice little... Uh, Pretty nice little situation here. I've actually found so many nice little spots at Tuba for float fishing. Most of them using just the tellies, but um, I never have made it. I wanted to try Seversky again and see if there was any like really hot Pontic Shad spots to level float fishing, but I've just been having so much fun at Tuba, I've kind of not, not just never left really. But we've gone from 60% to about 73% in the last week or so. And uh, the goal is to at least hit 80% for now. And then I think past 80, it'll probably just happen naturally. Because once I have sandwich bait unlocked, when there's something I really want to go for, we'll just do a lot of float fishing probably naturally. Mix that into the type of other types of fishing we're doing. I don't know if there'll be any good float fishing at this new river or not, but we'll soon find out. Yeah, the OK 
occasional Kessler's her herring. We'll go ahead and wrap this up shortly. I am, uh, this is sort of my uh, enjoy my good morning coffee video. But I think next we're going to go back to Mosquito and try out a new spot at Mosquito. This time without my audio on mute the whole time. So we'll see how that goes. But right, let's catch one more fish here. And if anything, this spot is probably even better in the afternoon, especially early evening, uh, just in, in terms of, well, I don't know. It, it, yesterday was the last time I fished it, so I guess things could have changed a little bit. But I was yesterday getting consistently, again, especially in the afternoon and the evening, consistently getting um, really nice sigil, most of them markers, and some of them up to and around one kilo. And uh, at least so far today, again, it might be the time, but so far today that hasn't necessarily been the case. Yeah, I think that was a roach or something. I don't know if you saw, but the, um, uh, just as soon as I was about to hit it, the float sort of looked like it was popping back up a little bit. Yeah, Sitchell and stuff don't normally do this, all this like nibbling and taking their time. That's what's been nice about this spot is for the most part, it's just like big hit. So that is a Sitchell. I'm wrong. They usually don't approach it like that. All right. So we've, again, we've still caught a lot of Sitchell here. We just haven't gotten into like the markers like we normally do in this spot. But again, that might be time of day mostly. Okay. There is a short little guide on sort of how I like to use the Bolognese rods and we're not a situation where at least I think they shine. Hopefully this has been helpful if you are trying to level up your float fishing or if you're lower, lower level and trying to um, look at start using these Bolo rods, just kind of giving you an idea on a couple tricks or tips that I use for uh, for making them work and especially with uh, how to sort of hook the fish. I think before I was using this technique, I, I had a lot more difficulties actually landing the fish. Um, but being able to sort of aim down towards the side and then just calmly sort of starting to reel in, uh, which you know, seems to be working well and is kind of similar to what I'm doing with telesticks now. When a fish pulls the float under with telesticks, I'm also sort of going to the side now and then lifting diagonal away from the float and the fish to uh, hook them with tellies as well. So it's not that different of a of a uh, movement from what I'm doing with tellies. It's just obviously with the bolo rods, we've got this reel attached. So it's amazing how if you just do a short cast like I just did, it's like you don't get bites. But once it drifts out there to like prime time, the sitchels and stuff start killing it. 
Okay. As always, I appreciate you watching, and uh, I'll see you in a little while at Mosquito. Thanks so much. <laughs>